Uh, yes, uh, you are loud and clear. We can hear you. Uh, so, OK. We also have on the call uh, today Ms. Julian Jing, and she is going to lead the demonstration for EndNote for uh, everyone who's joined the meeting today. Uh, OK, sure. So uh, so for this de uh, demo, straight to Ms. Julian, OK? Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, Miss um, Nurul, should we uh, wait for everybody else to join, or um, do we have everyone from your side uh, on the call already? Uh, uh, sorry. Okay, we can start at 2.30. We wait uh, for about uh, three minutes more. All right, great. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, as a start, it would be uh, good for us to understand who all from your end have joined uh, the meeting. So if you could quickly introduce uh, the attendees today, and then we'll also start with a quick introduction from our end, and we'll get the demonstration started and address all your questions with regards to the installation as well as uh, the product and features functionality. Uh, OK, sure. So I will start first and then I pass you to uh, Miss Julian. OK, all right. Sounds good. OK, right. Ms. Narun, we can start. OK, sure. Thank you. OK, everyone can hear me? OK, I hope everyone can hear. Uh, OK, assalamualaikum and very good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, attending uh, this demo on uh, EndNotes. OK, uh, and I'm sure um, some of you um, uh, may be new in new notes, uh, EndNotes and some of us Maybe they they have used already the EndNotes. So uh, EndNotes yeah is uh, um, a manage, uh, um, one um, that can help us to manage uh, our reference uh, and, and others. So uh, for this uh, evening, I'm glad we have um, Miss Julian from Clarivet. Uh, so without any further ado, I pass to Miss Julian. Uh, to more uh, explain about um, uh, what is EndNotes and what if it uh, was what is the use of EndNotes to the uh, student. So with us also uh, there is uh, faculty members, lecturers, and also student. Uh, I I think maybe some uh, more of them are uh, postgraduate students. Okay. So to miss you, Julie. Okay. Thank you. So um, very warm welcome everyone. Uh, I think for today's session, it's very much a uh, demonstration to show you the capabilities of EndNote 20. So on the call today, I have with me my colleague Ritma, 
She's the account manager. Uh, she's uh, the business development manager for the region, and she, she has been working closely with the library to try and get this um, uh, available for all the users at UTHM. So um, after today's demonstration, do provide us with your feedback so that um, uh, Juan Muru will be able to uh, make some decisions on whether this would be a useful tool to have at UTHM. So uh, let me share my slides. Can someone confirm if you can see my screen? Uh, okay, Miss Julian, we can see. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so I have uh, a few slides with, uh, I have some slides that I wanted to share with all of you to give you an idea of what are the functionalities on EndNote 20. Um, Noru has already indicated that um, there are some of those that are on the call who have never used EndNote before. Some of you have already used uh, previous versions. So I'll try and cover some of the differences um, as we go through the session today. If you have any questions, feel free to put those questions into the chat box so that um, we can address those questions uh, through the session. Okay. So what is the what is the functionality of EndNote um, overall? So we have uh, EndNote 20, which is the desktop version. We also have EndNote Online. Um, there's also a free version of EndNote. What uh, ultimately is this tool all about? Okay. It is helping to address this particular issue on the screen where researchers spend nearly 200,000 hours per year trying to format their citations for their research papers. Uh, overall, when you're talking about the, the um, number of hours that you spend on research alone, okay, you wouldn't want to be um, spending that much time on just managing references. So a lot of postgraduate students especially those that are doing a lot of heavy research, doing a lot of uh, paper writing, they require a tool that would help to reduce this uh, amount of hours significantly. So this is where EndNote comes in. It helps to accelerate your research by giving you a tool to help you to manage your references efficiently. Okay? It would not only help you to save time to make sure that your um, your references are in the correct format for that particular research paper. It also helps you to stay organized uh, because you do not need to save multiple types of libraries for your references. You just need to use EndNote. Yeah. At the same time, if you are writing papers with other co-authors, you will be able to use um, a, some of these collaborative tools within EndNote desktop which allows you to share your references with your colleagues. Okay. And finally, there is this tool within EndNote itself, this feature in EndNote, which allows you to match your final written manuscript to a suitable journal where you can publish. Okay. It will not guarantee that you will be published in that journal, but it helps you to narrow the choices down to the most suitable ones based on the manuscript and the references that you have used. So what are the other features on EndNote that I wanted to uh, highlight to you? Okay. You are able to attach PDFs, so uh, PDFs of the full text articles onto EndNote itself. Um, there is also a find full text functionality. So in the event that you have added the references um, without a PDF or without a full text, you are able to use this feature where you can search for the full text immediately um, by linking to your uh, library easy proxy or um, searching through the web. Okay. Then in terms of managing the PDFs itself, the PDFs, um, you can actually edit the PDFs on the fly within EndNote. Later on, I will actually show that to you during the demonstration. Then finally, um, it's also about being uh, organized. So what we have um, in terms of reference management is that, uh, say for example, sometimes you add uh, one batch of references at one go, so maybe 10, 20, 30, and the next day you add another 10 or 20, but you can't remember whether you've added those before. 
right? So this leads to duplications of references within your um, management tool. On EndNote, there is a, a very efficient way to deduplicate. So um, every time uh, after every session, you it will be encouraged to you will be encouraged to deduplicate um, the the reference list that you have just added. Okay. For some of you, you have previously used EndNote uh, uh, X8, X9, uh, and now we have EndNote 20. Ultimately, EndNote 20 was a major revamp and overhaul of the whole user interface of EndNote. And so if you see EndNote 20 today, you would see that it's to uh, a brand new look and feel um, compared to what you were previously used to. We also improved the PDF writing functionality and also enhance some of the workflow um, tools for the end user. Okay. So this is how EndNote 20 currently looks like. Later on during the, the demonstration, you'll be able to see this. Um, there's also the improved PDF reading and functionality uh, refers to the, the fact that you are able to um, do the editing within EndNote itself now uh, and also uh, there are various ways to add notes to the PDFs. So all these features I will actually cover during my demonstration, but um, I will be happy to share this sl slide deck with the library so that they can share with this with the other end users. Okay. The other feature that I quite like in EndNote 20 that the other versions did not have was this uh, tabs functionality. Uh, in the past, you could only probably see one field uh, where one one view where if you're looking at all references, you could only see all references um, and not see your other folders. But now you are able to see the um, various tabs as you're working through your references. Um, searching for duplicates has also been enhanced, as I mentioned before. And in the past, we have only used things like the authors uh, the author details, the year, the title, the journal title as basis for duplication identification. Uh, but we've, we have enhanced this by including the duplication by DOIs and PMCIDs. Okay, so it becomes more accurate in finding um, those duplicate papers. Okay. So these are just some of the thoughts of our previous testers who were uh, working with us before EndNote 20 was launched. Okay. Ultimately, they, what they have mentioned was things like easier to read, uh, easy to use, a uh, lot cleaner, less busy. Uh, and some of the other feedback that I've received over the years when I was speaking to researchers was um, there were some questions around why should I use, uh, what's the difference between uh, Mendeley, for example, and um, EndNote Desktop. So we, in terms of EndNote Desktop, there is currently no limit to the size of the files that you can attach to the references. Okay, so that means that uh, if you sign on with us for EndNote 20, you download the desktop version, there is no size limit. So you can attach as many PDFs as you want. Uh, and this is especially important for postgraduate students who are working on huge papers with uh, probably hundreds of references. Okay. So with EndNote, um, there are various learning and teaching support available. So there's a 24-7 uh, learning portal available to you. Um, there is also uh, over 6,000 bibliographic styles available. If that's the main one of the main differences between the free version and the uh, desktop version. So if you're using the free version, I believe you're only getting about a thousand or so um, bibliographic styles. Um, then for desktop, you get close to seven thousand. Yeah. So now let me go into um, the plat the desk the demo to show you around this new EndNote 20. Okay. So there is a trial available. I think the um, Nuru has actually indicated the link to the trial um, information. So you can download this uh, the, the installer for 30 days before you'll be prompted for a 
um, a uh, token. OK, so uh, take this opportunity to have a look and see for yourself the power of N20. So I'm using an existing library that I have, but um, today's demonstration is very high level, uh, quite quick to show you some of the interesting features. But uh, when you when you come on board with EndNote 20, uh, there will be detailed training provided to everyone, um, all the users of UTHM. Okay. So on EndNote 20, uh, a few things that I wanted to highlight to you were things like the tab. So say, for example, here I'm looking at all reference lists. I am able to immediately open a separate tab and perhaps look at my other folders. So perhaps I want to look at my Sushi 2 um, research papers. Okay, Then I can probably um, do additional work in these separate tabs. Okay, Adding references is also very easy on EndNote 20. Okay, So in the event that you have already saved a PDF on your computer, uh, you can actually go to the computer folder where you saved all the um, references uh, full text uh, papers and you copy and drag into uh, note. OK, so you can just drag and drop into uh, uh, and student, note. Uh, student teams were sponsored for, for different events. Uh, apart from this dig scaling digital learning um, for digital learning, we have 2.14 million uh, uh, 2.14 million plus students uh, 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 student uh, sorry, down, student downloads, downloads and also uh, learning platforms and uh, innovation courses and uh, also free courses. Sorry, uh, yeah. Let me just uh, mute. I think this is uh, somebody. Uh, uh, so I would encourage all of you to mute your lines because uh, yeah, otherwise <laughs> there will be disruption. Okay. So back to the demonstration. So as I mentioned, if you have a PDF on your computer, you can drag and drop it into the um into the uh, EndNote 20, and then it will start to import the references for you. Okay. Um, if you already had a previous version, uh, sometimes they would not, uh, it might have already identified it as a duplicate, so then it would not include that for you. Okay. So once you have attached the PDF, uh, you can see this little paper clip uh, logo next to each of the references. So it means that this particular reference actually has a PDF attached to it or a kind of document. All right. So if you want to see and expand this particular reference, just double click on that. And then on the right hand side, you can see that there is a, a full text PDF available. So this is the article that you're working on. Um, we have enhanced the um, PDF editing. So in the event that you want to say highlight certain portions of the text in this PDF itself, um, you can click on markup or annotations right here. So there's a highlight functionality and you can actually highlight um, the sentences that you want on this particular PDF. OK. You can also include things like uh, a, a comment. So you can put in a comment right here. OK, and then save. Okay, so this saves this version of the PDF into your EndNote folder. Um, so the next time that you're coming back into this particular record, so let's say I moved out from that record already uh, and I close this and I come back in again. The highlights and the notes are still there on the uh, PDF. All right. If you want to edit the references, this is where you can um, easily edit some of these information. So perhaps when you were uh, importing the references, some of these uh, details were missing. So in the event that it's so, you can actually easily edit this immediately on the record itself. Uh, the notes here can also, research notes can also be used for your own um, reference. So there are certain fields where it's free, free to type for yourself. So you can put in any um, text that you want so that it helps you to identify that particular reference or to give you a way to put in some notes to say why, uh, why did you include this reference uh, for future use. Okay. So this is um, the reference. 
if you want to add a brand new reference, uh, a totally new reference, you can also do so um, by going to references and then new reference. You can include any type of reference that that there is out there. OK, so there's this drop down menu where you can see all the different types of um, references. Uh, we are also understand that sometimes uh, some users find it difficult to know how they should actually reference certain document types. So what you can do is if let's say that it's an online database, we, you select that, the fields that are needed would automatically show. All right. So things like um, here for a case, then they will change and it will include things like case name, reporter volume and so on. So this becomes like a relevant fields for that reference type. Okay, the other um, functionality that we have would be uh, creating your groups so you can create. So we understand that there are perhaps thousands of references that you've included into your EndNote library, but you need a way to easily manage and categorize some of these references. So you can still use one reference library like this, where you keep about a thousand plus or so or up to 50,000 different reference uh, lists. But under my groups, this is where you start to organize your references. So you can see here, uh, it looks like a bit of a mess, but because of uh, the previous demonstrations I've done, we've created multiple types of folders. But what you can see is if, for example, you want to group your uh, papers into a particular category, you can easily create these groups um, like antibiotics, and then there'll be a separate group under antibiotics for that specific mm, uh, medicine, for example, or even for things like tropical fruits. If you're doing a research paper on tropical fruits, you can create a folder for durian, a, um, a folder for mangosteen, and then you add those references in there. Okay. This um, references here, this 155 actually come from the 1700 plus that I have here. So you can imagine that this is just a way of organizing this particular set of 1,700 uh, papers that you, you have included. Right? Um, you see these different little icons here. Okay, This signifies that this particular group is a bit different. So we have um, the normal group, which is like this with a little box or icon. This means that you have to manually include the references into um, that particular uh, folder. Okay. So like this, I drag and then there's one reference here. The, the one with the magnifying glass, this is where uh, it's called a smart group. So we have this thing called smart group where you can set a, a, a option. OK, you can uh, set an option to the group to say, hey, every time I've added a, a paper on, say, currency, OK, please include that automatically into this folder. Okay, so that's what we call a smart group. So it automatically helps you to manage the references that you have newly added into the EndNote library. Okay, so this is the way that you can manage. Then if you see this little icon where there's um, two, two silhouettes of human beings here, it means that this particular group has been shared by other, uh, shared with other uh, users. Okay. Um, so if you click on this, share this group, okay, you would see who else has have you been shared, have you shared this with. So each of these groups here can be shared with up to 100 users um, and you can set the permission for them to read and write or read only. When you set read and write, it means that they can edit anything on the reference record. They can also edit or add any notes into the PDF. Okay. Okay, um, then the other feature that we have here is called retraction. Okay, uh, we have now got this additional feature here called retractions, which alerts you to articles that have been retracted so that uh, it warns you that you might be want you might want to be careful of using that particular reference. Okay. Uh, let me see. The other, uh, okay, one more useful thing is that 
sometimes when you're adding a huge batch of references, say 100 over references, you might want to have an idea of which of these references are have higher citations. Okay? So there is a link out to Web of Science. So in the event that UTHM um, is considering uh, a subscription to Web of Science, there will be an opportunity for you to uh, create a citation report. So if you click create citation report, it takes that 181 papers and pulls that into, oops, sorry. Okay. Yes. Let me find another set. Okay, so what you can do is here and then create citation report. Okay, and then it pulls it into Web of Science so that you can see um, the citation counts for those publications that are from Web of Science. Okay, so just take note because on on uh, EndNote you are able to add articles that are not from Web of Science because it is ultimately a reference management tool. When you use this feature of creating a citation report, it will only pull the cite um, the documents from Web of Science here so that you can see the citation counts for those documents. Okay, so this is um, the integration with Web of Science. Okay. Now there are various preferences that you can set as well. So if I click on preferences here, you will be able to see uh, a few things that you can change. So you can change the display fields, okay, which uh, fields that you want displayed. The display font size. Okay, so you, uh, some of you might previously uh, some of you feedback that it was very small the text. So there is now a way for you to increase the size of the font. Um, the duplicates. So you are able to um, select more fields to compare, so that it, you can uh, detect those duplicates more accurately. The find full text functionality here allows you to put in the um, easy proxy of your library. So for UTHM, if you have your authentication route for full text, okay, you can put that in here so that uh, it integrates with your uh, subscriptions. Okay. okay. Then uh, PDF handling is something that I quite like as well, where that you are able to set uh, an automatic import from your computer. So say, for example, uh, earlier on, I showed you this particular folder where I kept all the full text PDFs. So in the event that I add more into this particular folder and I have set that PDF handling feature, then every time there's a new PDF added to this folder, it automatically gets sent and imported into EndNote desktop. Okay. Um, there are still other features here. So synchronization, we understand that um, you might want to do use your references on the go on the on online. OK, so we allow there's a synchronization capability to your annual online account. So all of you should be able to register for an annual online account and synchronize this uh, end of desktop with annual online. Then um, earlier on, I mentioned about the manuscript matcher. Okay, so say for example, this particular set of uh, references on currency, you have finished your paper and you want to um, see whether you can find a journal that matches your manuscript. So what you can do is um, there's a manuscript matcher feature here, so you can click on that, and it will port it over to manuscript matcher. And you can see here the 12 citations from EndNote 20 have been included. All you need to do is put in the title of your manuscript and your abstract, and then it will proceed to uh, find a journal for you. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some dummy information. So from here, immediately you can see um, the most suitable one based on match score. It will show you the journal impact factor, uh, the latest one. 
the category it is in as well as the quartile. Okay? So once you're here, there is a way for you to link through to the uh, journal's information to view the journal's homepage or immediately submit your manuscript to the journal. So this would link you to the journal submission page. Okay, so this feature, um, the feedback that we've received is that it's very useful because if you had to do this search separately outside of EndNote, uh, sometimes there are journals that are similar names or some researchers tend to um, think that, oh, uh, it, it's the same journal. Uh, so it run into the risk of submitting your manuscript to the wrong journal ultimately. Okay. The icons here also represent uh, open access, so you can immediately see which of these journals is open access or not open access. So from the from the researcher's perspective, this is important because for open access journals, this is where you will probably need to um, uh, pay for an article processing charge. Okay. Right, so let's go back. So that's the manuscript matcher. I will pause here because I think I've gone through quite a few different features already. Uh, are there any questions so far from anyone? Let me have a look at the chat. If anyone wants to unmute yourself to ask those questions, you can also do so. Uh, Julian Brilma here. Yes, hi. Uh, one of the questions that Nurul had uh, prior to our uh, meeting was how can um, uh, the uh, how can everyone uh, access um, EndNote um, once the once we conclude the demonstration? So please do cover that during the meeting. Mm, okay, sure, sure. So to install uh, EndNote, um, probably so that the link is there already. So what you can do is um, follow that link to download the EndNote version. So there's two versions. So there's a web of science. Uh, so there's a Windows version and a Mac version. So depending on the machine that you're using, you can download the Windows installer or the Mac installer. Um, just select that, download it, and then um, just install it on your onto your PC. Uh, there might be some on-screen instructions for you. And then if let's say the uh, after a month or so, you would probably need to put in a uh, product key to access further. Okay. Okay. Hello. Um, I see. Yes. Hello, yes. I have a question. Hello. Actually, I want to know on the difference between the Mendeley desktop and EndNote. And please also let me know how many papers Mendeley have the capability to store uh, in their uh, database and uh, how ma how many papers EndNote can save? Thank you. Ah, OK, so um, I won't be able to uh, know the details of the number of papers for the Mendeley desktop version, but uh, I can safely tell you that for EndNote 20 desktop, uh, there is currently no limit to the number of um, uh, full text articles that you can attach. So there is no size limitation. So say, for example, here, file attachment um, unlimited, reference storage also unlimited. Okay. So um, for the desktop version, there is no limit at all to the number of papers that you can in include into this particular part that I've just showed you. So here I have 1,707. You can put in as many as you want. Okay. Same thing goes for the attachment. What is the main difference between Mendeley and EndNote? Um, we are two different uh, providers. So uh, Mendeley is provided by a different company. Uh, EndNote is provided by Clarivate. Uh, one of the key differences between the two, as I remember, is the limitation in terms of the attachments. So I believe there's a limit to the, uh, the number of papers that you can attach to Mendeley uh, because, yeah, the, the free version would have a limit to it. Um, the other thing is that for EndNote, there is an integration with Web of Science. So in the event that UTHM has access to Web of Science, you will definitely be able to link through to Web of Science to know more about the impact of those references that you have used. The other thing is that there is the link to the manuscript matcher. 
So this manuscript matcher allows you to more accurately match your paper to a suitable journal before you submit to um, uh, any any other journals. Okay. Um, there are also other tools like sharing capabilities. Um, I'm not too sure whether Mendeley has that functionality, but that is definitely one of those features that uh, a lot of users have feedback to us that they really like uh, on EndNote. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, good afternoon, Miss Ju. Yes. OK, I'm Dr. Raven. I uh, want to ask regarding the output styles because mm -hmm. uh, before the. Uh, Sorry, I can't. I think I can't hear you. So, so it means that it the end out output styles. Can you can you hear me? Um. Uh. I think you're dropping off. I. You're talk. You. You might want to repeat your your question again. Or if not, then uh, perhaps it's the internet issue. So maybe you want to type the question into the chat. Uh, one, one, one more question, please. If this EndNote 20 is a purchased version or we can use as a free download, free version? Um, so this there will be there's a trial available for for all users for 30 days. So um, okay. you can actually download the, uh, on the installer. So uh, earlier on, I showed you this link, it is also on the chat. So you can install um, the EndNote 20 version for Windows or for Mac, and then you have 30 days to use that before it you will be prompted for a product key. After so, 30 days, I have to purchase? Uh, you don't have to purchase. So um, the purpose of today's call is actually so that if you find that this is a very useful tool to have, uh, feed this back to uh, Madam Nuru from the library so that they um, they can gauge from user feedback to see whether they can subscribe for the whole institution. OK. Thank yeah. you. OK, Thank I see you. another question here in the chat. Hang on. Uh, can I use one account or license on two device? I use laptop mostly, but when travel, I use. Yeah, so you can actually use um, on, I believe, I, I believe it's uh, not more than three devices for the desktop. Yeah. But you can definitely log on onto the online version from multiple devices. That's not a problem. But the desktop installation, I believe you can go up to three. Okay, any other questions? Yes, I see Siti. You want to Hello. unmute yourself? Hello, can you hear Hi. my voice? Yes, I can. Actually, uh, I'm fami very familiar with the EndNote because I used during my PhD. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what the difference with the, the latest, because I think this one is the latest one, right? And yes. not 20. So I think I used the latest one and not 11, if I'm not mistaken. What, 11? So, <laughs> okay. If I'm not yes. mistaken. So what difference that's mean between EndNote 20 and uh, because I use the 6, 7, 8, up to mm. 1. So what difference, uh, I mean, the upgrade for between this and not? Yeah, there's, a, there's a actually a, a, a uh, lot of differences between okay. the older versions and the new and not. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, the whole menu and everything has been revamped. Everything is changed, the layout changed. Um, mm -hmm. The display of the font size is also uh, more flexible now. The mm -hmm. online search functionality has also improved the integration to um, say the other databases, the online databases search is uh, actually more smoother now. So let me just. I see. So it's more easier to synchronize. For example, yes, when correct. we are downloading in terms of the outer and citations itself. Yes, so it, it becomes see. easier. And then there's uh, uh, the attachment for the PDFs that you can edit immediately. Um, mm -hmm. It becomes easier to to share. So I know mm -hmm. for for older, very older, like older versions of EndNote itself, you can't share. So so I only see. you you're able to manage your 
the, your references. But in this mm -hmm. new version, you can actually share those fold, uh, folders with your co-authors. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, for those of you who are worried about using um, the new version of EndNote 20, but if you're using the old version, okay, um, don't worry about it because you can still use that same EndNote library and open it up in this new version. That's no problem, man. okay? Okay, um, Dr. Ravindran, you have a question here I, on output styles according to the style of journal. Currently, I'm using EndNote X9 and seems that not all output styles could be identified. Is this current EndNote 20? Um, I believe there's a, an improvement, so that it has been new reference uh, styles incorporated. So let me just show you. So open style manager. Okay, so we have, uh, so currently here under the installation, it will default, I think, install about 2000 plus. Okay, so all these will be here. But in the event that you want to in, increase this number, um, then under the, let me go here. Um, there is a place for you to download. So there is and not output styles. Okay, so it provides you uh, the available download for up to 7,000 different styles. So depending on the journal, uh, you might want to use this to find the publisher and then the relevant uh, style. Okay, so I hope this answers your question, uh, Dr. Raven. Uh, if there's any specific journal that you want to try and search for, you can always uh, go to this link and try and see whether you can find those styles or not. Um, at the end of the day, if there's no one style that is suitable, there is still a functionality for you to edit the existing styles. Okay, so say for example here under output styles, if Vancouver is very close to what you require but you need to make some minor changes, you can always edit. So I can click on edit Vancouver and all these are the different uh, segments that you can actually edit things like uh, numbering um, how they list how you list the author's names with a comma uh, how many authors and so on all these can be edited so once you have edited this to suit that specific output style that you want okay then you can save this as a another name and then you can continue to use that one for your um, future papers Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, the other feature that I probably haven't really uh, shown you because I don't have anyone to share who, who shared their group with me yet, okay, is that uh, in the event that somebody else shared the, uh, their reference group with you, this is the place where you can sh uh, view um, what has been shared. And for those that where you have uh, shared with others, if they have made any edits, uh, there, was, there will usually be a note that indicates what they have changed. Okay, so that's uh, it's trackable. Okay. Uh, we also have another feature. Hi, Julian, you're not audible. I'm not sure if everybody else is able to hear you.
Hi, Julian. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry. I think the um the mic might have got disconnected somehow. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, but now you can hear me clearly. Can you hear me clearly now? Uh, okay, yes, we can hear you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let me just double check. Uh, Okay, so you can hear me, yeah? All right, so for on Web of Science, earlier on I was talking uh, about EndNote Click. So you can actually download EndNote Click um, for yourself onto your browser. And what this does is it will help you to find the full text as well. So you can do a search for a paper, say on Web of Science, and um, it will work in the background. So these three dots actually represent um, and not click. Okay, so if there's a full text available, then it will show up. Hang on a minute. Okay. Just limit this to open access. Okay, so by right, if let's say um, it could be an internet connectivity issue that I'm facing at the moment, so hopefully you'll hold on. But in the event that there's a full text PDF, there will be a link here that allows you to open up the full text PDF immediately. Okay. So that is EndNote Click, and I would encourage you to try and install that so that it becomes more convenient for you to uh, add the reference. Okay, so just to show you how this looks like. Okay, so say for example, I've retrieved a full text article uh, from here. Okay, this one is the NSF. Yeah, so I do apologize. I think it has something to do with my connectivity. Okay. Okay, so this is found. Okay, so this is the full text PDF. Then what you can do is you can export it directly to EndNote Desktop. So immediately export this and open this up. And it will import into EndNote. Okay. So this is our uh, EndNote Click uh, or Corponio. You can install this onto your web browser so that it makes it easier to include the PDF full text to um, EndNote. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, otherwise, there is a help available. So if you have any technical issues, uh, you can always get technical help. There is also a training portal. So uh, during these 30 days, if you need more intensive uh, training, then you can click on the training portal. And there will be video tutorials available for you to see. Okay, so there are video tutorials here. So for Mac users, there is a quick reference guide for Windows as well. So all these are the available guides for you. There is also a community page. So um, there is an EndNote community. Okay, so for expert users uh, who are already using uh, EndNote and you have some specific questions, you can always post those questions into the community. And this is where they actually um, share information. So things like um, specific uh, questions or features that they want to find out about. Uh, Julian, can you show again if um, my EndNote library is empty? So how can I um, up uh, how can I um, transfer all the reference to the EndNotes? Can you show again? Ah, okay. So let me just close this library first. Okay. 
for the new user. The yeah. not slavery, slavery. It's empty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for new users, this is the tile that you will probably see. So um, can you see this? Okay. So this is the you can create a new library. Alright, then you can uh, select a name for your new library and save it onto your computer. Okay. And this is a fresh. Um, this is what this will be a fresh library that you can use. So if you want to add references, uh, what you can do is either from your folder with the full text articles, drag. And drop it into the EndNote library right here. Okay, so it will start to populate. Okay, so you can see the number of references increasing. So this is how you can add um, references immediately from here. Give it some time to import. Mm. Okay, so this is uh, how you add the references here. Okay, if you have a new reference, then you can click here. There's this uh, plus sign. Then this is where you select the uh, document that you want to reference. So if it's a journal article, you okay. fill out all these details here. Uh, alter alternatively, if you are browsing through, say, Web of Science or any other um, publisher's website, okay, there is a uh, selection. So you can select the references and export to Android desktop. Mm. OK, so you export to record and export. Okay. So it will open up as this CIW file. Just the open this and it will import the 50 into this. Oh, OK. 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 Yeah. So this okay, is how you add references. Uh, OK, to thank you. Create a group, to create a group um, here under mm -hmm. my group, we right click and there is a create group. So you can create group first and you name this. Uh, Okay. Or let me see hydrogen. hydrogen. Okay. Then if you want to add references for hydrogen in here, go to your references and do a search for hydrogen. You can do other search as well. Um, no, sorry, this is author. Hang on. Uh, any field and search. So if these are all the references that you want, select all and drag it to hydrogen. Then there'll be 50 here. Yeah, so this is how you create the groups. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, thank you. Welcome. OK. So um, is there any other questions that I can help to address today? Let me see the chat. Ms. Nurul, any questions from your side? I think uh, for the new user for Android, I think it, it, it be confused because when we uh, install the new, it needs the key. Uh, what is that uh, key? For that key. So maybe, uh, maybe it, it, it confused for the new user uh, to install oh. this uh, Android, yeah. Yeah, because it's a it's a desktop program, so yeah. uh, that's why most of the time it requires you to install and have a product key. It's a bit like Microsoft Windows or Microsoft Word, right? Ah. <laughs> so, so the first time users you usually have to go yeah, through first that time process. Uh, yeah. yeah, the process. Yeah. So that that yeah, I I hope they can cancel the uh they can click on tap cancel, then they can use the uh the trial for free for thirty days. And then you, we can see uh, we can see the endnote library because I think I I think not 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 all know about this 
So maybe uh, I can help them lah if if they uh, have any question about this to the library. Yeah, yeah. Um. So usually for for once you're on board. So let's say for UTHM, if you come on board with the site license for uh, EndNote desktop, then um usually that the product key is uh, automatically provided to you, and then it, you can actually pass it on to the users who are authorized to to use it. Then um, once that happens, it becomes less confusing. And then at the same time, we will also provide uh, training sessions for your mm -hmm. users. So especially those who are new, they will be able to go through the detailed training. So but the detailed trainings are usually two hours long. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so for today it was supposed to be more for a, a high level kind of demonstration to show you what mm -hmm. are the key features um, for, for, for users. Lah. Um, there is some in comparison chart here as well. So I'm going to put that into the chat box so that um, users can also have a look to compare what's the difference between the free version and the not free version that we have that they that we have. So today what I demonstrated is actually EndNote 20, which is the desktop install installed version. OK, so this is the one that users will have to feedback to you lah, to see whether they you they want this or not. Uh, OK, for for the try, is that possible uh, UTHM to use the academic set site? Academic set listing, is that possible for yeah. the trial? Cannot. Cannot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that for because it's a it's a it's a software lah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, so, okay. So cannot, but but they can always try the free version that is the online, which is basic, so that you can have a feel of what EndNote is. Uh, but ultimately, the free version is really bare bone lah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you, Janine. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Um, the other thing, maybe final thing that for users, um, there is also a plug-in for Microsoft Word. So in the event that you want to write with um, with your references properly laid out, right, the plug-in called Site While You Write can be quite useful for you as well. So uh, even for the free version, you are able to download this to try it with your Microsoft Word so that it becomes um, seamless to, to write your paper. Uh, okay, for the user, we will put the trial link at our uh, PDTA library website, so they can so you can go at our website and uh, you can download the uh, endnotes from our website for try to do this trial. Yes. Yes. All right, so uh, Ritma, I'm, I'll hand it back over to you in case you have anything else you want to share with them. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Julian, for the demonstration today. Um, I think this is helpful for all the attendees uh, to get started on EndNote. After the trial, uh, uh, what we will also do is um, uh, uh, Miss Nurul will send uh, over um, a feedback uh, form and if the attendees uh, would be interested, we can discuss how to proceed further, whether it would be an individual license for everyone or whether you would request a site license. Would that work? Uh, okay. okay. We, we will get feedback from our uh, from, from the trial version first to go more further for the next step. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you. Thanks, Panduro. Okay, thank you. Thanks, okay, thank you, Julian, to both Rima and everyone who come uh, for the demo. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, see you. Right. See you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.